From that first glimpse, from the first minute, it was more than a room, more than even the most beautiful room Robin had ever seen. Her hands shook on the doorknob, and the shaking didn't come from fear or cold. Her trembling hands were only an echo of something deeper that had been strangely shaken by that first sight of the velvet room. It was there in the alcove that she first began to call it the velvet room. There were heavy drapes of dark red velvet at the windows, and the wide doorway that led into the rest of the library had drapes too. When all the drapes were shut, there was a full circle of velvet. Robin pulled all the drapes shut and then sat down and looked around. It was a wonderful, cozy place, and a lot of people must have sat there to read in all the years since the Palmaris house had been built. There must have been other children who had liked the window seats with their deep, soft pillows. They probably took their books there and pulled the drapes shut just as Robin had and felt safe and comfortable and hidden. If they were a little younger, they probably pretended they were birds high in a nest or maybe princesses in a magic tower. Next, she began to look at the books. That was only a beginning, because it would take weeks to look at all of them and years and years to read them all. Some of the books looked very old, with their stiff leather bindings and old-fashioned print, but others seemed fairly new. She picked out a collection of fairy tales and went back to the alcove. She opened the drapes a little to let in just enough light to read by, and then stretched out on the fat pillows. She was sure she was too excited to read, and was intending only to try it out, to see what it would feel like to curl up with a book, as if she belonged there, but the cozy comfort of the draped alcove was very soothing, and soon she was deep in the story of the white cat.